<clears throat> well, um, I want to welcome everyone to the April 25th meeting of the Community Resources Committee. Um, the chair, Garrick Perry, and I would like to take a roll call to get this meeting started. Absolutely. Councillor Perry? Here. Councillor Elkins? Here. Councillor Jarrett? Here. Councillor Maori? Here. Perfect. Now we can get started. So I see a lot of people are here. I'm very thankful to see all of these names here in this meeting. Um, first, I have to say that everything tonight is being publicly recorded, uh, audio and video. If you guys later on, we're gonna have a public uh, forum. And if you would like to make a comment, please use the raise hand function. It's in your reactions um, menu. And if you're calling by phone, you can raise your hand by hitting the star now. Um, with that being said, the first item we have is, is an item referred to committee, but I would like to move the public forward form forward so we can hear from people if that is acceptable to the rest of the committee. Um, I think that is one of the main reasons why we are here. So does that work with everyone? All right. And here in these committees, we have a little more leeway. So we are not going to do times timed uh, responses, but I will ask that everyone be cost, uh, considerate of their fellow neighbors and other citizens. And so try to be precise, um, make sure that, you know, everything we say is also as cordial as possible. So with that being said, I will open the committee open to the public forum. If anyone has anything to say, raise your hand. I can't raise my hand because I'm just on the phone, but it's Peter Whalen. I'd like to say something. Okay, Peter. I'll put you in here. Thank you. I've had a, I couldn't get onto the Zoom call for some reason. My iPad wasn't allowing it. Okay. Um, I just wanted to, to make a, a suggestion regarding the rental fee because I've thought a lot about it since, you know, I've been communicating with some other folks in town, including landlords. And, and I think it's an extremely valuable service for both landlords and for tenants. Uh, for landlords, that they do all the rental agents do all the work. It's a, it's a, it's a you know, a, a, um, it's a great feature. But for it's a, for the tenants, it's just as valuable because instead of having to call, in theory, ten different landlords and tell their story over and over again, um, they uh, they can go to one rental agent who has access to you know multiple properties. They can tell them what their price range is, where they'd like to live, and basically tell their story, and then go visit these 10 apartments with one person. And I, I think that that would make their lives infinitely easier than having to just forge on their own. So I would like to suggest splitting the fee between the uh, landlords and the tenants, because both benefit from the service. Thank you, Peter. Moving along, we have GPS. I also need to be made up. Yeah, hello. Sorry, I couldn't figure out how to change my, my name on this. I, it seems got lost to me, but this is Gordon Shaw. I am the vice chair of the Northampton Housing Partnership. And I thought it would help to just to give a little background and context to why this came through uh, to the, to the uh, city council. Uh, uh, and because the idea, didn't just arise through council. It came through through a study that had been done uh, that the Northampton Housing Partnership commissioned on impediments to fair housing in Northampton. Um, so back in 2019, a report was published. It's it's available on the city's website. The name of it is Unlocking Opportunities: An Assessment of Barriers to Fair Housing in Northampton. And one of the more striking findings that came out of the research that was done to prepare this report was the number of, of, of tenants and, and people that work with tenants and trying to locate housing in Northampton identified as a barrier, the inability to be able to pay essentially what is a finder's fee, which doesn't even guarantee that you're gonna get the apartment in order to actually have access to the Northampton rental market. And it goes without saying, Northampton's a pretty cool place to live. It's a place of opportunity. Um, but it, and, and yes, rents are very high, um, which suggests that this, it's because of the market forces. But one thing that we can do as a community to stop, to sort of eliminate one of the barriers to make housing more access to housing in Northampton more affordable, at least fees, 
And honestly, if you go and look at how the services work, it's the tenant who's paying, not the landlord. The tenant gets a freebie here, yet the, ten the landlord is the one who benefits from all of the screening that goes on and screening out of tenants, I should add, as well. So it's really about fairness. It's not about you know, doing away with the fee completely. It's about putting the fee uh, where it really belongs, on in, in, in the, uh, 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 where the landlord is the one paying for it. And let me also just add, I mean, this is a true real impediment for folks that are coming into Northampton looking to use a Section 8 voucher. Um, it's, on, it's hard enough to, to be able to afford a rent as it is, but this acts, this acts as another barrier to be getting into those units. And folks may not know, but there's also assistance in paying first, last, and security, yet this whole structure that's set up for tenants to be able to just apply to get access to the housing basically precludes any tenant that might be looking to use that kind of supports to be get into the market. So that's really the context and the background for this. It's not trying to put anyone out of business. It's about the fairness of who actually pays. Thank you. Thank you, Gordon. Uh, before we move on, I did want to say that Everyone, you can turn on your camera when it is your turn to speak. Uh, I, I do like seeing your lovely faces. Uh, and I would ask that you just state your name and um, you know you could state where you're from as well. That being said, Robert. Hey, um, I'm Robert. I live in Northampton. I was born and raised here. Um, and I'm just going to share my experience over the past week quickly because I just received notice to vacate from my landlord and so I'm currently looking for an apartment. would love to stay in Northampton where my family is, um, but the cost right now, rent alone is just outrageous. Um, and I, so I'm on a salary for the first time in my life, uh, basically for the past 10 months. Um, I finally just got to a place where I'm not living paycheck to paycheck uh, when I received notice to vacate. And uh, the broker's fee absolutely is a huge barrier for me. I make about one and a half thousand dollars too much in order to qualify for a Section 8 voucher, what's considered affordable housing in Northampton. Um, so I'm not able to uh, take advantage of those programs. And so the move-in cost of rents alone, but with the additional broker's fee actually is more than a month's worth of pay for me. Um, and yeah, so I just wanted to share that um, and the frustrations that I'm feeling right now about it. Um, you know, I also, <laughs> this would be a wonderful first step uh, to making renting in Northampton uh, more accessible, but um, you know, it's it's a first step. There's a lot more to do. So thank you for considering. Recording in process. Thank you, Robert. Uh, next, we have Kathy Wicks. Hi, everyone. I'm Kathy Wicks. I am a commissioner on the Human Rights Commission and have a, a statement from the commission. Um, I live in Florence uh, and have uh, been in the area since 97. So the Human Rights Commission has chosen housing as a, as a human right, uh, as a prime focus of our work this year. We see brokers fees, which are paid by tenants as a major barrier to assessing housing. We support this policy proposal to end brokers fees paid by prospective tenants or tenants. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Megan, what's next? Hello, everyone. I'm also here with Kathy on behalf of the Human Rights Commission of Northampton. But I first uh, learned about this possible legislation when I was vice chairing the Ordinance Review Committee of 2020. Um, I think, again, the current and former members of the Housing Partnership um, if you come to mind, Keith and Carmen Juno and Lemmy Coffin, uh, Gwen Nabod, who visited those meetings to educate us about the, the burdens imposed by uh, rental fees in NOHA, Northampton, um, eventually um, prohibiting having prospective tenants pay uh, brokers commission fees uh, was one of the highest priority recommendations from us. Um, 
So personally, uh, growing up, my, my folks struggled as first generation immigrants from East Asia. Um, they didn't have higher education or professional training, um, language fluency, or uh, green cards. As, and we moved more than a dozen times from rental to rental. Um, maybe I'm remembering because uh, these are round numbers, but my mother shared that their combined wages for uh, four jobs and our family of four before taxes was $1,000 a month and $400 of it was first paid as rent for a two bedroom apartment. That was a, a two mile walk from one of our jobs. Um, we didn't have a car, but the remaining $600 was not enough for food, uh, medicine, clothing, transportation, other necessities. Um, I knew that every new rental required a security deposit that we had to borrow. Um, I can only imagine that additional broker's fee would have made our housing searches more uh, tenable, if not impossible, uh, for families like mine. Um, there are so many additional financial burdens for uh, many new immigrants. Um, they have to pay tuition for maybe extra English and skills classes. They're supporting extended families overseas. Um, they pay fees and for healthcare and, and so much more in cash because of the lack of um, banking or credit history. Um, we know that Northampton is not a hospitable place for new immigrants and refugees, mostly because our already scarce housing is largely unaffordable. Um, most of the immigrants and immig refugee population are not part of this process and are not representing themselves here in this forum. I really do appreciate the many advocates that are present who, um, from the, those that were involved on the unlocking opportunity studies to the current Department of Community Care, and especially the sponsors of this order who, who are working so hard to eliminate this and do cost on the most vulnerable uh, community members. Thanks. Thank you, Megan. Uh, Hannah is next. Hi. Hi. Uh, my name is Hannah Schaefer. I'm a renter in Ward 5, and I'm a member of the Northampton Housing Partnership that's been working on this home rule petition. Uh, so Gordon mentioned the 2019 study identifying barriers to housing in Northampton. Broker fees were one of the big um, barriers that were identified. Um, at the time of the study, two thirds of Northampton rentals were listed by a rental agency. So these agencies do represent the majority share of the market. Uh, and these um, Broker agencies require first last security for most of them and a fee of 60% of one month's rent. So tenants can easily for a one bedroom apartment being pay, be paying upwards of $4,500 or more um, just to move in to the first month living in an apartment. Um, rent No Hope provides a wonderful service to landlords. They do background checks on tenants. Um, they take photos, they set up the listings, they show the apartment to prospective tenants. It's an amazing service. And uh, we're hoping that landlords will be the ones to pay for this service. Uh, I'm somebody who's used Rent NoHo before. Um, and an apartment that I moved into years ago, um, when we moved into the apartment after moving in, there had been like buckets of paint that were spilled all over the floor. And this is such a, such a small, silly, fixable example. But we moved in and the apartment like was covered in buckets of paint that had been spilled. And when we called the rental agency, they said that you know their contract with us had ended and there was nothing that they could do. Um, and it was our problem now. So I think that you know all that we want is for landlords to be paying for this amazing service that they're getting. You know, um, the cost of wages has stagnated. The cost of housing has gone up exponentially. The pandemic showed us that like these are bigger issues They've been big issues for years, but now everybody is in such an unstable situation. So this would just be a really big boon to people who can no longer afford to live in Northampton where they work. Um, the one other thing that I'll say is that 
you know, some of the pushback that we've heard against this um, when it was first proposed is that, you know, if we do this, the cost of housing will skyrocket. Um, and I just want to call that out as a really like retaliatory and fear mongering argument. Um, it's the same argument that's used whenever we talk about like wages going up or Starbucks unionizing. Um, so if we're going to hear that tonight, I just want to call that out for what it is in advance. Um, thank you so much for hearing this. Oh, thank you, Hannah. Next would be Taylor. Good evening. My name is Ace Taylor. I'm a member of the Housing Partnership, but I want to speak uh, in my role as a landlord in Northampton. Uh, I was doing my taxes the last month, and one of the things as a landlord that I can take off as expenses are things like broker fees, are things like advertising fees. When I was a tenant, there wasn't an option to take that money off of my taxes. As a landlord, if I can't rent an apartment out, I'm out a month's rent, but I'm not at risk of being homeless. When I was a tenant, if I couldn't find a place to lease up, I was. The burdens are disproportionate. The risks are disproportionate. The just thing to do is for landlords to pay these fees. As a landlord, I can choose to engage these services if they're worth my money or do that work myself. And that's a choice that I can actively make with much less risk than a tenant has, whose choice is pay the fee or don't get an apartment. Thank you. Thank you. Um, moving on, Dan Kennedy. Dan is next. All right. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'll keep this pretty short because I think everything that I'm going to be saying is something someone else will already have said. Um, I can give my own experience about moving to Northampton. Um, it was 2018. Um, I ended up paying about, oh, I did the math out, is 41 th or $4,100 to move into an $1,150 a month apartment um, in Northampton. And a chunk of that was first, last, um, the security and the, the broker fee. And I wanna point out that the comment someone else made about like, you just contact one broker and that's all you have to do. That's not the reality of that experience. You have to contact multiple brokers, sometimes paying multiple fees just to get access to look at the apartments. And in a lot of times people just, uh, not, not people, the brokers end up saying, well, here's a listing, go look at it online. And you just like, you're just doing your own searches. Uh, sometimes it's that they have control over those searches. You have to become a member to look at the actual listing. Um, but that's more monopoly. It's not about the service provided. Um, and the one thing that I sort of just heard um, Taylor mention, which is that landlords get to choose whether or not they use this service, but the tenants have to pay for it. That is a really terrible relationship. Um, it's not a logical one. Uh, it's not something that someone could opt out of. Um, and it's not something that you necessarily get all of the benefits from uh, in, that, in that scenario. So I just, I think it's really important to note that there's a really big power differential um, in how that's going and the functionality of it is also not ideal for a lot of people. Um, so thank you everybody for your time. Uh, next is Michael. Hello, um, thank you for shifting the public forum to the beginning. I just wanted to echo a lot of the comments that have been said in favor of making landlords pay the brokerage fee. And I wanted to add my two cents as a graduate student at the University of Massachusetts Amherst. Um, particularly. And so I think um, if Northampton wants to be a community that is welcoming to undergraduate and graduate students and celebrate the fact that we have five colleges in the area um, and that we also want to remove barriers to entry in this community, we have to recognize that brokerage fees paid by tenants are, are one of the main obstacles. Um, for example, my brokerage fee was $930. That is roughly my bi-weekly paycheck. Um, I'm in a, a pretty good position as a graduate student, but many of my peers, I would say the majority of my peers, just based on the stipend alone, are basically all eligible for statewide um, food stamp eligibility. Uh, we're 
fairly economically precarious. Uh, rent is skyrocketing. I moved here from New York and I'm seeing New York prices for one bedrooms and two bedrooms. Um, so the fact that this burden is falling on tenants and not landlords who, as some have mentioned, um, are in a much more stable position economically, uh, I think it's unacceptable. And I, I hope the council does um, remove this barrier to entry in our community. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next up is Lemmy. Hi, um, my name is Lemmy Coffin. I'm a renter in Northampton. Um, you know, as the sort of report enumerated really clearly that it's a barrier to entry, but I think also um, broker's fees paid by tenants also like hurt affordable housing overall. I've lived in an apartment since 2017 and I've been heavily discouraged to even look <laughs> for housing otherwise. Um, and I, right now, if we're talking from like an ecological perspective, I pay like upwards of $300 uh, in the winter for heat because the insulation in my apartment is so bad. Um, but because of broker's fees and because of raising rent costs, I am like not incentivized at all to like move out. And so I think not only does this like create a barrier to entry, but also keep disincentivizes landlords and property management companies from upkeeping current properties because there's such an incentive to stay where you are in Northampton if you are a renter, because you know if you move, rent is going to go up just inevitably, like not only just the initial costs of, of, of renting a new place, but also, um, you know, looking for new housing. It's just like, you know, you're gonna get, you know. Um, so I would just really encourage council to pass this and pass other more, even bigger um, things that work towards affordable housing. Like I think the council should be looking at ways so that renters could build equity. If we're build, if we're investing taxpayer money into, um, you know, affordable housing, it's pretty much always goes to developers or like the landlords. That's usually like the the incentive structure that exists for developers to like build affordable housing is they're still getting money from that. And so I think looking at um, much more progressive ways, even than this, to help renters build equity and ultimately build more stability in our community and financial stability in our community. And this is like the tip of the iceberg. So um, yeah, that's it, thanks. Thank you. Uh, Christina or Xtina. Hi, um, it is Christina. Um, my name is Christina. I have lived in Northampton most of my life. And um, yeah, I'm also really in favor of uh, eliminating broker's fees that are paid by tenants. Um, I'm a renter. And um, as a lot of people have said before, this is a service that is provided to the landlord. It makes the landlord's life super easy from what I can tell um, when searching for a tenant. Um, and in my experience as a renter, it actually really does nothing for me. Um, including I've had experiences where I've been uh, like being shown properties by a representative of a broker and have asked like basic questions like, is this utility included in rent? Like, will this particular thing be fixed before the next tenant moves in? And have had the broker say, um, I don't know. And like never be able to give me that information. Um, and so I think that that's like, it's really like, it's really not a service provided to the tenant. And it's really pretty absurd that the tenant is the one paying it as of now. And also as many others have said, this is just the tip of the iceberg in terms of like affordable housing around here. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Um, next up is Donna. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Yes, I'm a, a rental agent. Um, with a company in East Hampton. And let me just first say that um, not all rental companies are created equal, believe me, I know. And I do understand the frustration of the expenses, but as an agent, let me just say there is benefit, I feel, to the tenants because many times I'm telling the landlord, I think that rent is a little bit high, people have to be able to afford to live. So I think we try to educate the landlords, at least 
I do, I know my company does, we try to help them keep the rents somewhat reasonable. Um, the other th benefit to tenants is, you know, we're providing a, a real rental. It's not some sham or scam on the internet where you send in money and it disappears. We escrow the money. We hold the first, last security, all of that um, <clears throat> in our escrow account. And only upon execution of the, the lease agreement and the move-in date, do we release the money to the landlord? So it's a layer of protection for their finances. Um, I know it's crazy. The rents, I've seen them go through the roof. It's frustrating for me too. I hate to see this happening in our area. But at the same time, I don't know what the complete answer is about the fees, but you know, I have helped two immigrants recently that didn't speak English get housing. I even sat with one who had a credit glitch when we ran his credit report. I got on the phone with Bank of America, you know, switched, 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 switched to this department, that department, finally got someone that spoke his language. They had a translator for Burmese and was able to help him get this credit glitch worked on so that when he goes to buy a house in a year, this isn't an issue. So, you know, we do a lot of stuff behind the scenes that people wouldn't necessarily know. Um, our forms are all legal. I use the Massachusetts Association of Realtor Forms that are done by their legal team because many of the landlords are trying to charge things that aren't allowed. It's amazing how much they don't know. So, I mean, I do think we provide a service. I do understand the frustration with the, the monies involved. Um, I always try to encourage the landlords to not do first, last, and security. I try to get them to do first and security. That way this 60% is actually less, you know, like if you were doing first, last, security and 60%, that's a lot of money. But if you're just doing first and security and 60% of one month's rent, that's 40% less than if the last month's was included as well. Does that make sense? But anyways, I do get the frustration. It's, it's horribly expensive. I don't know whose fault that is for Northampton's rents going so crazy, but you know, it's the, the climate we're in. So we do try to protect everybody. So I just want to throw that in there. Thank you, Donna. Sure. Uh, next is Gwen. Um, yes, hello. My name is Gwen Nabad and I live in Northampton and I'm a renter. Um, I also work with the Northampton Housing Partnership. Um, I'm here to support the plan to protect renters from real estate fees. There is a service that, uh, this is a service that benefits landlords and real estate brokers and creates a barrier for new people who wish to come live in Northampton. We're having labor shortages here in the Pioneer Valley. And I think that we need to attract people into Northampton to keep our communities lively and diverse. I think these fees push the cost of living and moving over the top. It also limits rental housing only to people who can afford to pay the fee, leaving out people who are making money at local labor rates, effectively moving families to the outskirts or forcing them out of town. Housing data has shown that these fees are a barrier, not just for local renters, but for renters who wish to come live in Western Massachusetts and who hope to become part of our local economy. This also impacts older adults whose children are moving into the next phases of their lives and are looking to downsize. It could be that they have lived in the same place for many years and now that it is start, time to start looking again, they're finding that the rents have gone up so much that they must leave and go away from all they have known including their providers and social networks. Thus, I believe this cost should be on the landlords who choose to use brokers to preview future tenants. Thank you. Thank you, Gwen. Uh, next up is Mark. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. It says you cannot start your video because the host has stopped it. Oh. Can you turn me on? Sorry. There you go. Thank you. Start my video. There you go. Hi, I'm Mark Hansen. Um, I'm a retired high school math teacher in Northampton. Like most people, I've spent a big chunk of my life as a renter, and now I'm a small landlord. I have three apartments in Northampton. Um, and because I'm a retired math teacher, uh, I'm interested in numbers, 
and I also have a lot of time. So I'm not gonna take much of your time, but today I went on Craigslist and looked at the apartments. If I go to Craigslist Apartments Western Mass and put in Northampton, 59 apartments come up. But if you look carefully at each of them, there's only 36 unique apartments. One of them is up five times, several are up twice. But today on Craigslist Western Mass uh, Apartments for Northampton, there's 36 unique, unique apartments. Of those, 25 have zero fees. Of those, one has an indeterminate fee. It just says finder's fee. And of those 10, say 60% or 75% fee. The next one I looked at was realtor.com. 26 unique apartments, 22 have zero fees. Three have 60 or 75% fees. One has a bizarre $650 flat fee. I don't know what that's about. Zillow.com has 16 apartments in Northampton, 14 have zero fees. Two of them have a 60% or a 75% fee. Apartments.com has eight unique apartments. All eight of them have no fees. Um, that's because those are mostly um, multifamily housing things that do their own listing. They don't have broker fees. I called today and made sure they don't charge broker fees. Sabbaticalhomes.com, eight come up, but only four of them are actually in Northampton. All four have no fees. So if you total those up today, Monday, there are 90 apartments listed for Northampton. Of those, 73 have zero or low fees. There, why am I saying low? Because there's two of them that have a $25 fee. Two of them have a $29 fee. That's like a Zillow listing fee. And one is a $35 fee. Those are small mom and pop landlords like me who are charging $25 or $35 for the credit report because otherwise they run 10, 10 uh, a perspective of 10, it will look at 10 apartments and the mom or pop landlord like me gets stuck running all those credit reports. So as of this morning, 81.1% have no fee in Northampton. Now I heard Hannah saying that at the time of the study, two thirds had a fee. When she says a fee, I'm assuming she means the big fee, which is 60% of a month rent or 75% of a month rent. But two thirds of them having a fee mean that fully one third did not have this fee at the time of the study. So this might be a solution in search of a problem. I would also point out that when property taxes go up, the tenant pays that. Any tax, that any burden that comes to me as a small landlord, I just figure what my total is. I figure I have to make my certain small percentage to live. And that just goes right through to the tenant. So wherever this goes, it goes, it doesn't, it's not really going to go to me. But when we implemented like the rainwater runoff tax, that by a very small amount increased rents. And this 60% of one month, if it comes to me, by a very small amount, it will increase rents. It's not going to really affect me or the tenant. What will happen is. A small company like Robinson Real Estate, who I sometimes use, might be forced out of business. If you spend a little time with the Google, you can see that there's all rental companies are not the same as Donna pointed out. There's good ones and there's ones that people complain about, you know, from here till Tuesday. And the ones that people are complaining about are making people angry. So if we make this really tough and have the good ones go out like Donna's firm or like Robinson Real Estate, then we could become here in Northampton unfriendly to business. If we become unfriendly to business like Northampton, then our property taxes will go up and then no one will be able to afford to live here. So that's my two cents. And thanks for listening. Thank you very much. Uh, next up I have Theodore. Yes, uh, just a moment while I do the video. Okay. Um, for, for one thing, I, I did want to say that Sharon Heston from Rent NoHo is trying to join this, but it says that she's been blocked. And I know she has a lot she wants to say. Um, but I, I believe she's listening right now, but is unable to talk. Well, um, uh, if you could, could you tell uh, her that you can get it from the actual agenda on the city website, or you can just take the link uh, and post it into your search bar and it'll take you to the Zoom link. There's just a little problem there. She she did try that and I don't know why. I, I'm not with her to know what what's going on on her end, but I just wanted to say that she's 
only missing from this meeting because she's having technical difficulties. Um, but my, my hand was up because I had a few things I wanted to say. Um, the person whose name shows up is GPS. I know they said their name. I didn't, I didn't actually catch it. And then also Robert, uh, who said this in comments, they both said that the fee was collected whether or not they get the apartment. And at least that has not been true. I use Rent NoHo. Um, they collect a check for the fee at the time of the application, but it is not deposited until the applicant is approved. So if the landlord doesn't approve them, they get the check back. So it's not, it's not um, a gamble on whether or not you're gonna get the apartment. You only pay the fee when you get the apartment. And again, I don't know if other rental agencies do things differently. Um, the next thing I want to say uh, to the gentleman who said that they would go to multiple brokers simultaneously to cover more ground. My question there would be, if the fee is collected from the landlord at the time of the landlord approving the applicant and the applicant has gone through multiple brokers, couldn't there possibly be multiple landlords approving this one applicant and and then who pays for the services the brokers provided? Do our landlords saying, yes, I approved this applicant. And, <clears throat> and then they find out that some other landlord also approved the same applicant and therefore the, the apartment seeker went to the other landlord. Uh, a service was provided you know, to all the landlords in that case and somebody needs to pay it. I'm, I'm just saying it's possible that you could have landlords paying for for getting nothing. Um, and then the one last thing I want to say, and this is a question to uh, the, the counselors. I'm not sure, I believe this was discussed as a possibility in Boston and it was voted down. And I just wondered if anybody had any verification of whether that did happen and if so, do they know what were the main points on why it was voted down? So that's all I have to say. Thanks. Thank you, Theodore. Uh, next is Brendan Bailey. Hi everyone, uh, thank you very much uh, Chair uh, Perry for letting me jump on here. Um, my name is Brendan Bailey. I'm the Chief Executive Officer for the Realtor Association of Pioneer Valley. Um, so our jurisdiction does cover all of our Realtor members in Hampton, Hampshire and Franklin County. And I'm gonna use an external monitor. So I apologize for looking off screen a little bit. <laughs> um, <clears throat> excuse me. On behalf of the Realtor Association of Pioneer Valley, I'm speaking in opposition to the proposed home rule petition, which would, if enacted, ban the payment of broker's fees by tenants in Northampton. Rental agencies can play a key role in combating discrimination in housing that cannot be overlooked, protecting valuable populations, and increasing their access to fair housing. Real estate brokers are licensed by the state, required by law, to fulfill strict education and testing requirements, which include fair housing law. Neither renters nor home, home providers are regulated in this way, and they may not understand fair housing requirements. Additionally, if rental agencies were not participants in rental transactions, a home provider would be forced to assume the tasks typically covered by an agency. To cover these costs and pay for their time, home providers would need to adjust rents charged to tenants, which would not, not improve housing affordability. Because of the scope of services that brokers provide, it seems likely that many home providers would continue to use a broker if this ban passes, paying the fee directly and distributing the cost through a tenant's lease term as part of the tenant's monthly rent payment. In that case, the ban will have only changed how and when the tenant pays. Notably, there is no set rate for rental fees. They are negotiable with each transaction. Both home providers and renters choose whether to use a rental agency and both may independently participate in the housing market if they prefer. 
By focusing our attention on the most important issues surrounding housing affordability, we are best poised to increase fair housing in Northampton and the region. We urge Northampton to expand the zoning changes adopted last year which allowed half units and two families by right on the condition that the units be fossil free. Increasing the supply of homes in the community will positively affect affordability. Realtors are committed to advancing how fair housing and increasing housing supply to meet the needs of people across all stages of life, supporting policies that advance the dream of home ownership for all. And we finally urge you to reject this message and thank you all so much for your time. Thank you, Ren. Uh, next is Diana. Hi, everybody. Um, let me just try to figure out how to get my video on. Sorry about that. Okay. All right. I think I, um, oh, I've got it turned around. Hang on. I don't know how to do that. Oh, technology is not my friend. Um, I'm sorry, everyone, I, I can't figure that part out. Uh, it's it's totally turned around. Oh, here we go. There we go. Hi, everybody. <laughs> so sorry. Um, I, I'm in a unique position. I'm a, I'm a realtor with Taylor Real Estate, and I'm also, uh, I'm a licensed certified teacher, still actively teaching immigrants and refugees. That's the only people I teach, and I teach full time. Um, so I'm a licensed realtor, and I also have a deep love, appreciation, and concern for you know, the immigrant and refugee population. Um, first, I wanna just mention, someone said that you know, we collect the fees. When I first started at Taylor, we did collect the fees at time of application, um, but we always returned it if they weren't approved. Uh, since then, we've stopped doing that because the pandemic, it was really ineffic inefficient to have someone write out a check and then you're handling that check. And then, so I only collect the fee if they've been approved and um, they still want the apartment. Next, uh, most of our landlords used to collect first, last and security. And we've got them either collecting first and last or first and security. So instead of, let's say it was $1,000, instead of collecting $3,000, we're now collecting $2,600. The next thing is a lot of people can't see what we do to protect the tenants. And I want to explain that because if I wasn't on this side, I would think the same way that a lot of people feel. Um, I would be like, you know, how is that good for the tenants? But I've seen it firsthand. I've seen landlords not understand fair housing. And I've had to explain to them um, that, you know, what they're asking me to do violates, violates that. Um, and I've educated them. I've had landlords send me the lease and say, here's my lease. I've been using it for years. I want to keep using it. And I see that they say after three days late, um, the tenant must pay a hundred dollar fee. And I'm like, whoa, 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 this is illegal. Well, I've been using it for 20 years. Well, I'm here to educate you that that's illegal in Massachusetts and you can't do that. You can't charge someone a late fee after three days. So I educate them and I actually send them the law. Um, I went to go visit an apartment. A landlord has been renting it for years. I go see the apartment and the second egress, if you open up the door, you just fall out two floors. And um, the landlord said, oh, I'll just, you know, put a lock on that door, but you can still rent it. And I said, no, that doesn't work like that. That's a huge liability. Um, that is a huge danger. I, I will not rent it for you. And now that I've warned you, if, if anyone gets hurt, you know, you're going to be liable. And so the landlord built the stairs that were supposed to be there. But the landlord didn't know. He was like, well, there's another, there's another way out. Yes, but there needs to be two ways out. Um, so, you know, all these things, here's another way. When I'm renting to someone, I do a background check. So, you know, the, the way, if you're a tenant in unit A, you know the tenant in unit B being put there did not have a criminal record because we did a thorough check. And my landlords have said two things. They have said, um, you know, some of them are like, I don't know if I'll keep using you if I have to pay. And that worries me 
because they're not going to be doing those background checks. And the mom and pop landlords don't know the law and they don't know um, what they should and shouldn't be doing. And the tenants are so desperate that that if that landlord had rented that apartment by the, uh, on their own and the, um, the stairs weren't there and you just fall out the second floor, the tenant would have taken it because people are de uh, desperate for rentals. Um, if the landlord had rented that other apartment by, their, by themselves with a $100 late fee, the tenant would have accepted that because one, they probably wouldn't know it was um, illegal. Oh, I just had a landlord who allowed a dog and said, okay, I want a $75 pet fee every month. And I said, you can't do that. You told me what price you wanted allowing a dog. You can't now charge a pet fee, illegal in Massachusetts, really? So we're constantly going between, and, and that is how we provide service to the tenants and the landlords. Um, so I've had landlords say, you know, I don't know if I'll use you anymore, which if they don't, that, that worries me because the tenants won't be taken care of. I've also had landlords say, I'm gonna to continue to use you guys if this gets passed, but what I'm gonna do is just increase my rent. So let's say the apartment's $1,000 and the landlord passes that along and it's extra 50 and the tenant pay, lives there just two years. They've, instead of that $600, broker fee, they've now paid so much more, you know, or, you know, if they were there three, four years, even more. So those are my thoughts. But if I wasn't on this end, I would totally agree with everybody when I saw the article. And, and actually, five years ago, I was not a realtor. So I totally would have read that article and thought, yeah, this is the right thing to do. So that's what I wanted to say. Thank you. Evan is next. Hello. Uh, my name is Evan. I've been a renter in Northampton for 15 years. And I'm here to voice my support uh, for this measure. And I'd like to um, many of the, the reasons to pass this, I feel like have been very eloquently expressed by other people in this meeting. Um, I'm interested in responding with a thought to Diana's uh, report about this role that realtors are playing in educating landlords about what they're legally allowed to do in the renting process. And I would agree that that sounds like very important work. We should not have landlords breaking the law and demanding more of tenants than they're legally allowed to. However, I don't think the right position to educate the landlords is a class of realtors who are being paid by the tenants. Like, the tenants are being asked to pay for the education on landlords of landlords on the legal possibilities of what they're allowed to do. Why are the tenants don't have to pay that? Why don't landlords have to pay to get educated if they want the privilege of renting out their place and collecting rent? Why, why should we have to worry about them complying with the law? Why should we have to pay a fee to make somebody else follow the law? Shouldn't they have that responsibility already? And if they need to be educated, why do the tenants need to pay for their education? Why shouldn't that education be part of what it means to be a landlord, to be allowed to write a lease? I think the burdens are being unfairly distributed for what is a service that could have value immense value for landlords, but also indirect value for tenants who, as a side effect of this role, at least have somebody there who has some regulation who can say, 
oh, that's illegal, that's exploitation. You know, we can't allow you to do that because we have some oversight. Why isn't the oversight directly on the landlords if they're gonna be breaking the law? Um, I think that's an important uh, way to think about these benefits, my question of who has to pay for them. And we're also hearing some people talk about how landlords will pass the fee. If they have to pay, they'll ask for that in higher rent, which I just want to point out is another great example of the power imbalance because landlords do have that choice to raise the rent. Tenants don't. We don't have somebody to pass it off onto. There's an enormous power imbalance. And by requiring the fees for the services they gain from employing a realtor, requiring them to pay for that, that is at least beginning to address that power imbalance. But I agree that there is an issue of landlords just raising the rent to accommodate that. However, we do actually have laws about what kind of rent raising is allowed, and we could have more. Like, there's a world where we can make it less profitable to rent properties. I think that would be a better world. I also just want to call back to one other point that another attendee made, uh, Lemmy. Uh, Lemmy spoke to the idea that the rental fees as a renter are a barrier, not just to new people coming into the community, but also to people who are currently in the community, but in a situation that they want to change because there is this front-ended special cost for moving in that's above and beyond your rent, it does incentivize you to stay where you're at. It makes it much more expensive to switch. And that means that people are more likely to be financially stuck in bad situations and landlords are allowed can, can benefit from this by letting their properties degrade, knowing that they have a slightly more captive set of tenants who have fewer options available to them. And speaking of fewer options, I just want to finally address the numbers calculation we heard a little earlier about what properties are available to rent right now, rent-free, or sorry, fee-free. And I just want to point out that as a renter, you are coming in with specifications about what kind of place is gonna work for you. You might have a pet, you might have a family, you might have a job in a special place. You might need access to buses. The quantity of available rental spaces is immensely reduced when you're applying your, your concerns, your needs for a certain apartment. And what can start as 20 options can go down to two. And whether the ratio of options that are fenced off behind a fee is 20% or 66%, the fact that they're fenced off and taken out of the, they're, they're put on a whole different level of cost by this fee is a dramatic impediment to what kind of choices you can make and it's a power flexing of a privileged situation where a landlord 
knows that there aren't enough rental properties to suit the demand in this area. And so rents can go up, they can accept the services of realtors that slap a big fee on it, and they can benefit from what's a already desperate, bad situation. <laughs> so for those reasons, I just wanna give my full hearted support to this measure. And I hope it's just the beginning of a number of policies that address some of the other issues that have been brought up. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Next is Regina Roy. Hi, thank you so much for listening um, to my um, perspective. Uh, I, I would like to bring something up that I don't think has been addressed yet. Um, um, coming from my own situation, I represent of the disabled and low income people. Um, it's difficult enough to come up with first, last and security and broker fee and application fee and credit check fee. Um, it, it really makes it impossible to find a place to live. And the homelessness situation is just getting worse. Um, people's financial capabilities have been destroyed with this pandemic. Um, there, a lot of people have lost their homes and become renters. The rental market at the moment is really uh, high demand, small supply. I've been looking for nine months now for a place to live. I'm currently homeless because of this situation. Uh, luckily, a friend is letting me um, uh, stay at her house, but you know that's not a permanent situation. Uh, it is just incredibly difficult. It's very discouraging and depressing and um, very scary to be in a situation where you're a tenant and you cannot come up with enough money to be able to move, not even counting moving costs. I'm disabled. I, I can't move my own furniture. I, I need to pay a moving company to do so. I have a perfect rental record for over 25 years, but that doesn't matter if I don't have the money. I've been an excellent tenant everywhere I've lived. And that doesn't matter if I can't come up with these broker fees. I've been looking on Craigslist and everywhere. And a lot of the very best apartments in my estimation that are affordable and uh, have all the qualifications that I need also have a 60% broker's fee. There's, there's no way I can come up with that. And, and I just want um, people to understand that from the, low income and disabled elderly uh, point of view, it, it, it's very difficult, very discouraging and um, very scary. Now I understand that realtors need to make money, landlords need to make money. Um, and, and this is a wider issue, which of course isn't, it's beyond the scope of this, but I just wanna put that out there that um, everybody needs a place to live. You know, we, we deserve the right to, to survive and um, the high rents, uh, along with everything else that I've, I've already detailed, I just make it virtually impossible and uh, very, very discouraging. Uh, so I, I would like landlords and realtors to please think about that. Um, it, just because someone is disabled or elderly or, or low income doesn't mean they're a bad person. It doesn't mean they don't deserve a good place to live. And uh, I just... I, I just wish this industry wasn't an industry. I wish it was more, um, I, I don't know what the word is, but anyway, uh, I'm, I'm getting too emotional to be able to express myself coherently any further. So I'll just sign off. But thank you for, for hearing me and giving me this chance to speak. Thank you so much. Thank you, Regina. Uh, <clears throat> next is Kathy. Hi folks, um, my name is Kathy Borowski. I'm a real estate broker in town. I'm also a landlord and I'm also a Massachusetts state certified real estate appraiser. Um, this Putting this burden on landlords is absolutely gonna cause rents to increase. And as Diana said earlier, uh, if your rent goes up by the 60% rental fee that the landlord's gonna have to pay because that's one of his expenses and, and owning rental property is a business. It's not a hobby and people are in it to make a profit, regardless of 
whether people agree that that's their right or not, that's why you own rental property. So you're going to pay that rental fee. Uh, the landlord's going to charge another 5% for the first year. And that's going to continue probably for the life of the tenancy. And rents do go up every year because all of our other expenses go up. Our taxes go up. Our insurance goes up. Everything goes up. Um, you just have to keep in mind that owning rental property is a business. And we love to have tenants come in and make their properties uh, their home. And somebody who stays in one of my properties 10, 15, 20 years is a, is a great tenant. And most landlords are respectful of that. And they increase the rent, the minimum amount, because they would rather, most landlords would rather keep a good tenant than re-rent a property every year, which is expensive for everybody. Um, and another point that was made that there are plenty of properties that are available out there that are rented by the owner themselves. Uh, I've never used a rental company. I rent my own properties and I never charge a rental fee because they're my own properties and I want to meet the people that are going to live there. Um, and another point that was made uh, that I think is relevant is that I think it's a slippery slope when we allow government to dictate how businesses charge their clients and who they charge their clients. Uh, it, it should be a free market society. And if you don't like the way one particular business operates, then don't use that business. Go use another business. There's plenty of rental uh, offices in town. There is not a monopoly. Uh, not every rental unit is listed with one company and people have options. So um, I would encourage people to, to shop around. And if you don't like a company, don't use them. Use somebody that you think is doing a good job and that, that is fair. Uh, so I am against this uh, proposed ordinance, and I think that um, it's going to cause rents to go up across the board in the city, and uh, I don't think that's a good thing either. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Uh, Rachel is next. Hi, thank you so much. My name is Rachel. I'm a longtime renter in Northampton, and I think a really good point was just made that if you don't like a business, don't use it. And I think that that should really apply to landlords who are seeking a service, like a broker to run background checks, screen applicants, deal with checks, um, things like that. And there is a real disproportionate number of landlords using a particular broker. Um, and so that really is distorting this conversation, I think, quite a lot. Um, I wanted to thank Donna Coleman and Diana Baranowski, I think is how you pronounce your name, um, landlords who recognize their position in this. I've actually learned a lot from the broker side and clarity about the kind of services that are provided because it, it illuminates some of the value behind the fee. Though I know for a fact, and many have already attested that not all brokers are the same in providing um, similar services for those fees. And I've heard dozens and dozens of stories over the years about brokers who are misleading about the properties that they're representing, provide the most basic, most minimal of service, literally unlocking the door to a unit and letting a person walk around, not having information about utilities, um, safety, and so I don't think that there's a debate about whether or not a service is being provided and whether or not that service should be paid for. There's a real disconnect between who is offering what services, the quality of them, and then who is responsible for paying for it. And what I've really appreciated in part of this conversation is that there's a range. And when I'm hearing $35 as a fee to run a background check, that's different from $600 or $700 for the most like cursory service. And that we're also seeing highlighted here power and that that power is really based in renters trying to meet a basic human need for shelter and owners who are actively building wealth and their financial security through a business, as was just stated, by owning property that people are desperate for because they need housing. And I think that there's a real dysfunctional cycle in housing in Northampton, where I've lived for a long time and been part of these issues for a long time. Rents are disproportionately high given this location 
but there are students whose parents subsidize their rents. There are residents at Bay State. There's transplants from major cities who want to be close to the cultural amenities of the five colleges, their professors. They're competing with people, not just new residents who want to come in, who may be immigrants, refugees, low income, but also people who work so for so long in the service economy of this town who are stuck in units and are not able to make lateral moves because of these fees and because rents have gone up, which I know many owners who were told that their properties, their rental properties would not be listed unless, unless their rent was increased. So there's an inflation of rents that's happening for many reasons that are totally unethical. And I think this broker fee conversation is bringing up some very important conversations we need to be having overall about housing in Northampton. And I think in particular, there seems to be a lot, a lot of anxiety from people who are who have a lot of wealth relatively. And I wonder what kind of conversation needs to happen to educate landlords about the options available to them. Because the landlord mentioned, I can deduct this expense. I don't need to pass it on to my renter. There are ways that people who own property are building wealth, have stability, it is the business, and have a lot of options for absorbing this kind of fee. In addition, putting pressure on the agencies and the brokers who are charging way more than is actually reasonable. They could come together, organize to change the system with the power they have as owners. Thank you. Thank you. I believe next is Patrick. Patrick. Can I, I'm, I, if I can break in just briefly, Councilor Perry, um, if you have already spoken and you aren't looking to speak again, can you please take your hand down? I'm just losing track of who is still waiting to speak and uh, thank you, sorry. Yep. No worries. Thank you all for hosting this forum. Um, I'm just kind of here, so like, like first and foremost, like I support like addressing this issue because like as a renter, like I'll be blunt, renting in Northampton is prohibitive. We've heard we've heard it from Evan, we've heard it from Regina, I'm sure we've heard it from a lot more people. My own case, like my own thing, like as a working professional, 40 hours a week in I work in academics, um, you know for all intents and purposes should be able to afford to live in Northampton. I had to move out last year after eight years of living in Northampton. And part of that was the, the cost of the fees, the cost, like the, the associated fees um, with, you know, 60% doesn't sound like a lot until you're dealing with like a thousand dollar rent or more. Cause that was legit like the only thing I could find was nothing less than a thousand dollars. That's six hundred dollars that like realistically wasn't in the budget. Um, so like those types of things where it's like it's just prohibitive and it is a question that we really as a community both at, for speaking from my perspective as a person who's not living here but often in Northampton um, cause I live literally right over the town line in East Hampton, but like the, those types of things, like how, how do those relate? And like, granted, I've had experiences way back when I first moved into Northampton with realtors, cool, great things change, use the same firm, totally different experience. Um, it was not great. So like, but even on that, like the 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 rate at which and someone just talked about it is like the the way the rent is structured in Northampton is very like prohibitive for people coming in a lot of times it is subsidized in some ways um by parents uh, or like in others making it very difficult for people to come into the community or people to move around within the community um so that's kind of my piece. I know I kind of blew through that. I apologize, um, but I have other things that I need to do. <laughs> so have a great night. Thank you all. Bye. Thank you. Uh, Robert, you're next. 
Cool, thank you. I've already spoken, so I'll be quiet. Oh, yeah. yeah, is that okay? Yeah, it's fine. Okay, cool. I just wanted to, since I put something in the chat, which apparently is not on public record and uh, other speakers have referred to it, just wanted to clarify what I meant, which definitely, you know, what I wrote was not totally accurate. Um, when So I used two rental agencies last week and the application process was if I wanted to apply for the apartment, I had to write a check for the application fee and a check for the broker's fee, 60% of one month's rent. That fee, uh, sorry, that fee is charged to me if the application is accepted by the landlord. And the reason I wanted to share that is because in both instances, I was not permitted to see the lease before applying for the apartment. So I could apply, be approved by the landlord, be on the hook for the broker's fee, and then see the lease, uh, the terms of the lease, um, which both brokers, uh, didn't actually even know the terms of. Um, and finally, I just wanted to, I've suggested this before on other city meetings. Um, I just really appreciate what Evan said about uh, why tenants should be paying for a service to educate landlords. I would love the city of Northampton to implement a municipal uh, rental registry where if you own a home, <laughs> an apartment that you want to rent out, that it needs to meet the minimum standards for safe and healthy housing defined by the state before you can even offer it as a rental. These aren't, this isn't a service that real estate agents should be providing. All right, thank you. Thank you. Uh, next is R. Madowitz. Hi, my name's Rich Madowitz. I'm the co-owner of the Hampshire Property Management Group in Northampton. We uh, are a large property management company with a significant residential and commercial rental pool. Um, just in terms of the education process, I know people have touched on this before, but the rental agent is not just showing the, the apartments. They're doing background checks. They're going to the current and previous landlord for references. We go to the previous landlord because there's some landlords that have a bad residential experience and they're trying to get rid of their existing tenants for whatever reason. So that's why we go um, one generation before for landlords. They also do employment and income verifications. They run credit checks. They also address any credit issues and interface between this per, uh, prospective tenant and the landlord. So on the front of it, people see, you know, I, they showed me the space and it took them a uh, half an hour and I'm getting this big rental fee. But there's a lot of work that goes behind this. Landlords are showing multiple spaces. So while people think that the, land, the rental business is a win, windfall for rental agents, I don't think that's the case. I think it's a good business, but I don't think people are getting rich renting apartments in Northampton. And I think some people have that perception. And I just think that that's a faulty one. I am curious if somebody can answer this question how many communities have adopted? a similar uh, ordinance or legislation. If somebody can jump in right now, I'd appreciate that. Uh, councilors are not allowed to interact with you during the public forum. So my takeaway is that there are no other communities in the Commonwealth of Northampton that have this ordinance. Is that correct? This isn't a hearing, it's not interactive. Yeah, th this time is just for you to speak. So assuming that I am correct and I have no idea if I'm correct, um, I, th I think there's sort of an anti-business flavor in Northampton. And I think frontiering on an issue like this is sort of indicative of the business community feeling that the city council has gone off in a direction that is a little imbalanced between a capitalist society and what seems to be more of a socialist agenda. Now, I am sympathetic to high rents. I think everybody is in the real estate business that are clients of ours. We understand that rents are high in, in downtown 
Northampton in particular. And I know a lot of uh, landlords like myself with existing tenants are very gentle about rental increases with their current tenants because as Kathy illuminated, it makes sense economically and also because of the relationship one develops as a, a landlord between their good tenants to raise rents modestly. And there are a lot of landlords that do not take full advantage of what the economic opportunities are and are pretty gentle with existing tenants on rental rates. So I'd just like to say that while we're certainly uh, a for-profit operation, I think there are a lot of landlords with more heart than uh, is being portrayed. And the last thing I'd like to say is that, as an example, like a manufacturing plant, when you change the price of raw materials, uh, the manufacturer is ultimately going to have to raise their prices. And you're going to end up with an unintended consequence here, assuming that the legislation goes through. And I understand why politically this is a very attractive piece. You know, there, there are not a lot of support for landlords that are viewed as uh, well to do and, and have significant uh, financial capabilities and assets. But what will ultimately happen is that, like raw materials, the cost, the operating costs have changed, and landlords will pass that cost along, not only to new tenants, but to existing tenants. So I think the unintended consequence here is that rents in Northampton are actually going to go up at a faster pace if this ordinance is uh, approved. I appreciate your time. And for those that are on the city council, thank you for your public service. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> next is Lauren. Hello, hi, I'm Lauren Rollins. Um, I'm a public policy professional. I um, moved to Northampton in 2011 and, and bought a house in Longmeadow and just moved back. Um, I had come here today just to listen, but I um, have a couple things that I think are, are worth sharing. One is just a niche experience that I recently have had uh, with a broker that I think is um, something to consider. In my case, uh, when I rented the place that I just moved into, um, it was a, an apartment that had a property management company. The property management company was outsourcing to a broker. And then I was having to go through two layers of approval. So I was paying for the broker who then not only wasn't the decision maker, but was two steps removed from the landlord and me, which just elongated the process. Um, it often meant that um, the broker's hands were tied with respect to communication with the property manager. And as some people have already said about not being able to see the lease until after the fact, it also meant that um, once the broker gets me approved, um, that fee, it, they deserve it for having done the work, whoever pays for it. Um, but if I see the lease and I don't agree with something in the lease, I still have to pay that fee to the broker, even if I later decide, because I now can see through the property management company, um, the terms of the lease. If I decide that I'm no longer interested, I am technically still on the hook to the broker for that fee. Um, so I think that's a, an interesting kind of test case that may not be the norm here, but is certainly possible as it creates a, an, a, an additional layer in the middle there. Um, another thing I want to say is, um, you know, I, I take uh, Donna and Diana and, and all of the um, realtors um, comments, uh, to, I, I take them at, at, at face value and I think that there is a service that is being provided. Um, however, like many other people have said, um, I see this as analogous to selling a house, which I just did. When I sell a house, I uh, employ a real estate agent on my behalf. That real estate agent, I pay a fee, a percentage of what my ultimate sale is on my house. And their job is to protect me from liability, make sure I don't do anything illegal, advise me on the cost of that I should list my house for. Um, and in terms of um, that, that, that's a similar thing to what a landlord is having a broker do. Um, and so I, I don't really see why it's a tenant protection um, to make sure a landlord doesn't get sued. The, the, the law protects a tenant. Uh, and so if landlords are lacking in education and that function needs to be fulfilled, then they can certainly, I would think, cost, uh, take the cost to do that um, because it ultimately protects them from liability. Um, in terms of the free market, I think it's also important to point out, right, that if uh, landlords pass on these costs to tenants, 
in a market that we already all know is lacking in affordable housing, and um, and then then those rent prices will skyrocket. Um, then they will price themselves also out of the market. That's also the way the free market works. So um, if there are, you know, there, at a certain point, if people don't have the money to afford your rents because you're tacking on all of your costs down, then those places sit empty and the lower rented places actually get rented faster. So that's the flip side of the free market. Um, and I just finally wanted to say in terms of, I think somebody asked the question, not just Mr. Matowitz, but also about Boston. So that bill to uh, do away, well, not to do away with it, but to shift the fees back to the landlord and not to the tenant um, is actually in committee still in Boston. The reason why it was introduced in Boston is because uh, a city no less venerable than New York City just did away with that legislation. Um, so they have shifted broker fees back in New York City and Boston um, their initiative to do that was in response to that. It's sitting in committee they have until May 9th, so it has not passed yet, but it is certainly still on the table. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Sandy. Hi, good evening. Um, Richard and I are right here because we only have one iPad. Um, I just want to start by saying that somebody had mentioned that there's one company in particular in Northampton that seems to have the monopoly on this on the rental business and um, that are doing two thirds of the business. I know there's about, we looked it up about 7,000 multi family or multi units in Northampton and I checked and Rent NoHo has done 350 and that's the that's the company that we use. Um, we go through Larry Farber, who is a landlord tenant advocate. He's a lawyer in Amherst. He actually um, does classes with Rent NoHo and provides them with all the legal paperwork that we have to adhere to. We're not allowed to do anything that's not on that. Um, we have tenants that have lived with, in our apartments for years, and we only go up about $25 every two to three years. Um, we, um, I'm, I'm getting tongue tied here. We, you know, taxes have gone up, the CPA, the water bill itself, the stormwater fee. We do all the outside maintenance, the lawns, the plowing, the, you know, bushes, everything. They call us up, they have a problem with dishwasher. We have to go in, we buy, I buy them a new one. Um, we've gone in and we place every single one in an apartment just to make sure we can have smoke detectors. We're very diligent about that. We call the contractors and plumbers. The tenant lets us know within 24 hours, we have on call you know, people that we're friends with that can go in their license and they can take care of the work. We have wash machines and dryers for them. We can't do a credit check. We can't go to we, their- we, uh, we don't have the time to do all that. I'm working seven days a week, 10 hours a day, sometimes 12 hours a day. We really need these uh, companies like Rent NoHo to help us to provide for our, our uh, provide good people for our apartments that we uh, know that are, are gonna be uh, trustworthy with the, with the apartment. And also, we also rely on them for help on uh, on ad advice on, on uh, what what's what's right and what isn't. We adhere to that. We're a small mom and pop uh, local. Uh, um, I don't even know if you call us a company. We're small uh, rental. Uh, um, we have you know forty six years <clears throat> for forty six years. What I what I think is, I do not want to see rent no ho or Robinson or whatever, Taylor, uh, anybody. anybody go out of business over this. I think we have never charged first months, last months, and uh, uh, we've never charged last month's rent. I think, I think that's a good point. Uh, but uh, I have to agree with Mr. Matowitz. I think that uh, as if this goes on, and maybe this is, could be just the tip of the iceberg, you're going to lose a lot of us mom and pop uh, owners. We care for our property. We care for our tenants. You can ask them. They'll tell you. We, we've tried the best we can. If they want to go to a big corporate operation, they're the ones who are going to be able to you know, deal with all this. 
So I, I think here in Northampton, uh, mom and pops like us are, are a good thing. Uh, so I'm hoping that uh, this helps a little bit to educate uh, the general public about what's going on. And uh, we, we, we care about our people. We've lived in Northampton all our life. Uh, we're here to help. And, uh, and I think this could, could, uh, could put another, um, you know, uh, thorn in our side, if you will. I hate to use the word thorn because I understand people are paying good rents. The market is what's driving these rents. And we understand that. I mean, we, but we're low, <laughs> um, uh, you know, I could go on and on and I, I don't, I don't want to take up other people's time, but uh, the point we want to get across is, uh, maybe there's another way of, of helping people, but we do not want to lose the services of Rent NoHo and uh, the other various other rental agencies around. They're so important to us. You know, we thank you. We know Rent NoHo has been in business for 16 years because we've been using them for 16 years. Um, we used Robinson years ago, um, and then we tried to do things on our own. And it didn't work. Rent NoHo helped us a year ago with a scam that we didn't catch. A girl was saying she was coming from Japan and or someplace and she needed an apartment and she would send the check and then come to find out she sent wanted to send us an additional $5,000 and have us pick up a car for her. But and but she would send us six thousand so we could keep the other one thousand. But we had to deposit that into our checking account first. And Sharon and Renee at Rent NoHo both went whoa 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 and told us you know they had sent us the girl's name and then said don't have any communication with her because um, we always have open communication with anybody that wants to talk to us, come and see the apartment with us. They don't just open the door and let them in. We have new tenants going in as of May 1st. And I went in there with them and said, you know, is there anything here that you would like me to do for you? Is there anything, you know, you would like addressed and I will do it before you move in. Um, I mean, thank you for listening. I'm sorry, but I am passionate about our tenants. We have kept them very low. We had a man that lived with us for 36 years and he said he could have never gone anywhere else but in our apartment because in 36 years, we only went up about $500. So, and we renovated his apartment, totally gutted it twice. So um, thank you for listening. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, next is Jen. Yes, hello. Um, my name is Jen Ramsey. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I've been a renter in Hampshire County for 20 years. Um, I've lived in many different apartments in Northampton. I've worked for multiple local businesses in your city, and um, I've worked as a public, public servant in your city. On average, I've had to move every two years of my adult life for various reasons. I've spent thousands of dollars on brokerage fees mostly because rental agencies have a monopoly on the apartment listings. I keep getting pushed away from Northampton because of the cost of living. I'm almost 40 and I just moved to Ham Hamden County in 2020 um, mm -hmm. because it was more affordable and my last apartment had a mold problem. I don't know if I'm ever gonna be able to move back to your city, which is unfortunate because I consider myself a part of your community. Um, that's just my story. I wanted to let you know that there are people out there like myself um, who keep getting pushed out of your city and further, further away because of the rent. Um, some people have no choice but to rent. Renting doesn't always equate to a stable long-term place to live. Sometimes renters need to move for due to a bad roommate or neighbor or landlord situation. Um, it's unreasonable to assume people who are renting places to live have the funds to pay the first, the last security, plus the brokerage fees, um, which are $600 plus right now from what I'm calculating. Um, so please remember that not all renters in your city are five college students. Um, some people are working people and um, we just need a place to live. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next is David.
Oh, wait. David, can you unmute yourself? There you go. Hello there. Hello. I'm assuming it's me you're talking to. Yes, yes, David Murphy. There we go. There you are. Excellent. Good evening, everyone. Hello. I'm David Murphy. How are you? Um, been listening to the listening to the meeting. Uh, let me introduce myself. I've been a real estate broker in Northampton for 43 years. I'm also a real estate appraiser. Um, I'm a landlord, but I do not do residential rentals. So I deal with this market as a landlord. Um, and I wanted to talk a little bit about the ordinance home rule, and then I'll, then I'll get into the particulars about real estate. And the first whereas in your ordinance um, refers to this, the study that was commissioned by Northampton. Um, the study used data from the Springfield Metropolitan Statistical Area, which means the statistics in this uh, include Hampshire County, but also Holyoke, Chicopee, Springfield, all of Hamden County. Now, as I'm sure all of you are aware, even if you're not statisticians, <laughs> Northampton and Amherst are very different from Holyoke, Chicopee, Springfield, and the other communities in Hamden County. So the basis for this doesn't work from day one. You know, the, the numbers that come out of this thing are gobbledygook. Add to that that on page seven, it says, uh, this report was written using an equity lens. So they tell you right in the report, this thing is not objective from day one. So your first whereas, you know, that this is the basis for doing this is ridiculous. Written with a lens, with statistics that include Hamden County, Springfield, or Chicopee. So the results of this are, are not anything that you should actually be basing your decisions on. You know, absolutely not. Uh, look at the details of that. Um, I'd like to also talk about the home rule process. Uh, Rich Matowitz, no, cities and towns can't do this. The state given, didn't give them the authority to do this and for good reason, they didn't give you the authority. Cities and towns are not permitted to helter skelter change reality across the 351 cities and towns. If the rules were different every 20 miles, nobody could function. In fact, the ordinance tells us the city needs to ask permission of the Commonwealth to actually do this in the first place. There's a reason for that. It can't be helter skelter. I go to East Hampton and hire a rental agent and I agree to pay that rental agent, but they can't show me anything Northampton because Northampton has decided on its own exclusively. Well, that I can't pay my rental agent because they have to get paid by the landlord because for some equity reason, Northampton is different. That's why you have to ask permission. It can't, there can't be 351 communities doing helter skelter stuff. Um, that doesn't work. That doesn't make a marketplace that anybody can really deal with. Let me tell you about rental agents and my own experience. Um, I call rental agents and I say, I have a unit available. I put my own lockbox on it. Here's what I want for it. If you have a tenant that wants it, bring me an application. I never meet them. The, the rental agents spend all of their time with their, with, with their clients, the, the tenants. They package them and sell them to me as being reliable people. I have a responsibility as a landlord. I own buildings with multiple tenants. I don't wanna move anybody into a building with my tenants that's gonna be disruptive. These tenants are my clients. I'm in business, they're my clients. I want them to be happy. I don't want a disruptive tenant. I want somebody who's financially qualified. They run their credit to make sure they can afford to pay the rent for the unit. Um, they run their, their um, references to make sure they're not gonna be disruptive. Because if I've got a building with five or six tenants, I don't wanna put a bad tenant in that has other people moving out and disrupts their lifestyle. I'm responsible to those people, they're my customers. I wanna take care of them. So um, the rental agents vet the tenants, they check their references, they do their credit, um, their application, you know, they've got to say they're not a sex offender or, or have any criminal history. Uh, that's responsible. And then they bring me the applications. I never meet these people. They bring me the applications and they actually try to sell these tenants to me because the rental agent only gets paid when I say yes. If I don't say yes, they can't collect the fee. So they actually package the tenants to try, them, try to make them appealing to me. And, you know, that 
I, they, what they do for me is bring me applications. They do more for the, actually the tenant because they, they package the tenant so they look appealing to me. I do work as a buyer's agent to sell people things. And what I do as a buyer's agent for my people is try to make them look as good as possible on paper so that the seller accepts their offer. That's what these people do for the tenants. You know, they, they, they bring the applications, but I reserve the right to rent the units myself. So I don't have to use them. I just say, hey, I got this unit. If you've got somebody that you think would be good for me, bring them to me. But they do very little with me other than bring me applications and try very hard to get their tenants accepted, you know, so that I'll take them into my units. So most of what they're doing is packaging their tenant, making them look good. Um, recently, the hospitals in the area have been offering bonuses to try to hire nurses, you know, 20, 25, up to $50,000, I've heard, to get new nurses to come here. So I've taken a deal you know, let's say at Holyoke Hospital. And I've been told Northampton is the place to live and I can afford the rents there. So I come in on Friday to finalize my agreement with Holyoke Hospital and sign my paperwork. And I've contacted a rental agent and said, listen, I want you to show me as many as you can on Saturday and Sunday so I can pick one out. I'll fill out the application. You set them up. You show them to me. I want to try and pick something by the end of the weekend. That's a service, and they're willing to pay for that service. You know, one of the things this document says is that it's totally centered on the lowest common denominator. What you're saying is if I'm a professional and I have finances, I can't hire somebody to do my bidding and find me a place for the couple of days I'm going to be here. I mean, between our hospitals and our, you know, and the insurance companies in Springfield and, uh, you know, the universities around here, people come here, they can afford to pay for things and they want that service. And you're saying they can't have it because your study says it's hard for people at the bottom of the market to try and find a place. Um, this, you know, this is about dollars. If you rent a $1,500 apartment for a year, that's $18,000. Half a month's rent is 5% of the total amount of money you're gonna spend. We're not talking about a lot of money here. Now you can look at that both ways, but still the majority of this market, it's an expensive market. Are people who are looking to come here, looking for a rental agent to make their life easier. And they're very willing to pay for that service. And you're saying they can't because you're totally focused on, on the bottom end of the market. First on a $1,500 a month apartment, first, last and security is 25% of a year's rent. The rental agent is five. You know, the problem is dollars. Northampton is an expensive place to live. East Hampton is less expensive than Northampton. Holyoke is less expensive than East Hampton. Northampton is not responsible for making everybody that wants to live here able to live here. I mean, look at the lumberyard. There are 55 units in there and it cost over $3 million. You know, it cost a lot of money to build a thing. You know, those units, cost a lot to put in there. They're not, it's not economically viable for, for a, you know, a private landlord to do that. It's really expensive to provide housing. You need the private sector to provide housing. But as I said earlier, not, Northampton is an expensive place. Just because you wanna live here doesn't mean you can live here. You, know, you may have to choose East Hampton. You may have to choose Holyoke. It, it, it's expensive. But I, but I really would like to, to reinforce the fact that, uh, at least in my experience, rental agents do much more to package and sell their tenants to us than we do. You know, the, the, we, we don't really need them. We can do it ourselves. The other thing you should consider is if we do it ourselves, you know, that rental agent brings them to me and they run their credit and they give me the package. And if I say no, they take them to their next favorite apartment. And they see if that landlord take them. And then their next favorite apartment. If those people apply to four different landlords directly and four of us run their credit in a 30-day period, they got no credit. Because when a credit agency sees that many hits in a short period, their credit tanks. We don't want to go there either. That's one of the unintended consequences of this. And it's it, it, you've got to consider that. You know, uh, you'll have, you know, and we've seen it tonight. Boku tenants will say, gee, I don't want to pay this fee. It's all about the fee. I want to shift the responsibility to someone else for, you know, six or $700 in my life. Um, but the ramifications of, 
of messing up this market. You know, it is the way it is for a reason. And it's been this way a long time because organically, you know, things float to a system that works and the system works. You know, it's Darwinism in, in residential real estate. It's become the way it is because it works and reliable. If it didn't work, it would have changed, but it, it didn't change. Um, frankly, rental agents do much for, for the tenants from my experience than they do for me. They bring me applications. If they're good, I take them, but I reserve the right to rent them myself and, and I can. Um, but rental agents, you know, they're helpful to both the tenant and to the landlord. But the bottom line is like those of us in the selling business, a rental agent doesn't get paid unless they succeed. If they don't get their person placed, they don't get a dime. Please remember that because it's, it's a very important thing. You know, it's, it's a matter of success. You know, if they never find somebody unit, they got to give them the money back because they didn't get the job done. Um, I'm, and I could talk to you all night about this, you know, real estate's been where I've been for well over 40 years. I understand it really, really well. And, uh, you know, it is true, you know, the, you, you know, property owners. Yeah. You know, somebody said, yeah, you can write off the cost of a rental agent, but the bottom line is every time you raise a tax, every time you raise a fee, every time you put more of a burden on a landlord, they're going to ultimately pass that along. And Kathy's right. You know, if you, if, if I've suddenly got uh, another fee to place a tenant in my unit, I raise the rent to cover it. And if that tenant stays for five years, they're paying that fee for five years, you know, because it's the cost of doing business. And, uh, you know, believe me, um, we pay stormwater fees. We pay, top, we pay, pay, top, pay property taxes. Um, we pay, pay lots of fees, you know, to the city and everything. Remember that when you vote for increases because those do trickle through to tenants because we do pass them along because it's the cost of doing business. But don't think for a minute, we don't care about our tenants because they are our customers and we wanna keep our customers happy. And, uh, and, and, and think about this. I don't wanna drive a tenant out for a rate increase. If I'm running a $1,500 apartment and I raise the rent such that my tenant is compelled to leave for that and I have a month's vacancy, and I get a 50, another 50 bucks a month for that unit, but it's vacant for 60 days to get that extra 50 bucks. How long is it gonna take me to recoup it? None of us want a good tenant to leave. We want them to stay indefinitely, which is one of the reasons we wanna screen the new incoming tenants because we don't wanna put a bad apple in with good tenants because if they leave, you know, we're in a position where we're gonna lose rent and it takes for, you, you never make that back. We want good tenants who stay there are our customers, we service them, we take care of them. We want them to be happy. We have to raise the rent every now and then, but not enough to get them to leave because stability is important. Thank you. Call me about 20 minutes of eight. Thank you. No, All right, I'm coming down here. I think I see Lemmy's here again. Um, Something to say quickly, Lemmy. Hi, um, I just sort of wanted to address some other things. I just want to address some of the things David Murphy said because it takes a lot for the like any government that moves at a glacial pace to intervene and so if we're at the point of intervening the market is no longer regulating itself in ways that are helpful or good um, it takes a lot a very very high burden for people to feel like they need to intervene with a policy and if the brokers fees and the landlords and the rental agencies were benevolent as they're being painted, then we wouldn't even be here because <laughs> rent wouldn't already be exorbitant. Like we keep talking about this market as this amorphous thing. And it's actually people like David Murphy and people like Brett Noho that make up this market that are driving these prices, right? Any exploit in a market takes people to execute the, the gap in the market. Like if there's um, demand for something it takes people to create to fill the demand and that's what people are doing with housing is they're buying housing and selling it at exorbitant prices so i just i i think it's comical to me that um that people would say that like if if landlords and rental agencies were doing what they said they've been doing tonight 
we wouldn't be here because I could afford rent in Northampton, right? If they were protecting tenants, there are structures that can protect tenants. There are tenants unions. I invite Rent NoHo or anyone working for them, please go start a tenants union if you care about protecting tenants. But you don't because you want to protect <laughs> like landlords and every renter here tonight. And I'm not trying to just like attack real estate people, but we wouldn't be here if they were saying they were doing what they were doing. If we were protecting tenants, we would have a robust tenant union in Northampton. We would have people being protected, but we don't. So we need our city council to protect us. Um, when my rental agency took over, um, I work, I've lived in Northampton at this apartment since 2017. And I think around 2018 or 2019, we got a new rental agency and it was a terrifying experience to get a new rental agency. I had no idea who they were. I was afraid they were gonna drive up the price because like it went from a sort of mom and pop run operation to a more like rental agency. So I was worried that rent was gonna go up because there was a rental agency involved. Also, all I've heard tonight from landlords is that it's really easy to pass the costs on to the tenants. So there's consensus here. Like I would rather pay a rental agency cost over the course of my lease than over the, at the beginning in order to move in. And so I don't understand if it's so, why is it such a contentious issue if we can, if it's so easy to pass along to the tenants in the first place, right? And also rent is going up anyway. The, the drivers of rent going up is not because the government is intervening. It is because landlords are not checked in what, and the, the business of, of renting property is so lucrative and has so little risk involved, right? Because that's, that's the issue, right? When you're a business owner, everyone's talking about the free market, but if you're a business owner, you have to take on the risk, you have to take on liability, you have to take on costs and expenses in order to make money. And the fact that me, the customer, the customer, as you put it, which is a whole other thing, is taking on the costs of, of the business owners. Um, and there's so, so basically what's driving up rent is that being a landlord is so low risk, high reward, that they can just keep driving up rent because me as a renter, I have no like economic power to, to make a change, right? Everyone's saying we like to keep rent tenants where they're at. That's economically incentivized. Yeah, I know. And that's why I've stayed at my apartment and have no actual economic power in making a consumer choice about where I rent because I'm so afraid of different costs. So I just think that all the sort of market arguments um, the market is made up of people and the market doesn't just do things on its own and the market in and of itself and the people who've made up the market in this town is why we're here in the first place and why it's un unaffordable to live in Northampton. Um, and there are actors in that market. There are people, real, real people that are making and building real wealth and real power by doing that. Um, and it's not just some amorphous thing happening in the background. There are people benefiting and there are people losing on this game. And so I am really glad that the city council and the mayor are working to like help people who are losing just <laughs> able to survive. Thanks. Thank you, Joe R. Joe R. Am I here? Yes. Hi. Um... I'm Joe Rydell. I've uh, been renting in Northampton for the past 13 to 14 years, and I've lived in Western Mass since the year 2000. Um, I'm currently in the process of leaving Hampshire County for Franklin Co County just because real estate is so much cheaper there. Um, within the next couple of months, everything that goes on here will not affect me, um, but I would still like to say how I feel about it. Um, I've never had to pay a rental fee or a, a fee to a realtor. That said, I don't understand why the tenants have to pay that service, which unfairly benefits the landlords who opt to use it. Um, and they are the ones who can afford to pay for it. Sometimes the people hoping to rent their apartments cannot. If someone has an entire another house to be renting out, they can afford to pay 60% of a month's rent 
for service that benefits them. I don't understand how anyone could dispute that. Those people that have disputed it throughout this talk seem to live in really nice houses. I just wanted to point that out. I'm in my bed right now, as were many people who spoke on behalf of this measure to eliminate these fees for people that just want a place to live. It's, it's easy, everybody. <laughs> the people that are speaking in favor of this stand to benefit from it. The people that are speaking out against it, they just want a place to live and want to be able to afford it. Um, that's all I have to say. I really didn't want to leave Northampton. I love it here. I love it. I can't afford it anymore. So that's it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, next is Joe uh, Mystica. Uh, oh. Hello. Oh, there can you, you go. Can you guys hear me? Yes. All right. So I'm, uh, my name's Joe Mysterica. I'm a four year um, rental agent um, with rentoho.com. And um, hearing some of these people, um, some of the stuff they've been saying um, on both sides makes sense. Um, however, I, first thing I want to point out is on this uh, study, kind of along the, David Murphy brought up some stuff, but um, I'm looking at page two of this study that was done, uh, the Unlock an Opportunity Study, and page two has a lot of um, information in there that seems like it's more um, drawn towards what the city um, could do better not so much um, a small business such as Rent Noho or Robinson. Uh, things like, you know, the affordability gap, um, job opportunities lack in, in Northampton. Um, the, the zone in where there's not many multifamily units being built or rental units. And I brought this up many times, city councilors and uh, the mayor about, you know, vacant properties that could be used for mixed use properties, um, such as uh, affordable or market rate housing, as well as small commercial or light industry. Um, so I, I just, I'm, I used to live in Northampton. Uh, I moved out probably about 10, 15 years ago. Um, so doing that and working for Rent Noho, I have a unique perspective where some people just have lived in Northampton, may not. Um, I just don't see a, a vision for sustainable housing in Northampton. Um, you're trying to squeeze small, small houses into these properties that just don't make any sense. And then people's houses are, you know, half a million dollar house that has basically a shed next to it that somebody's living in. So how is that sustainable or, or some sort of vision for housing in Northampton? Um, I brought up I was in a meeting with the Northampton Housing Partnership and brought up, asked the question, what is affordable housing in Northampton anymore? Um, Dave Murphy brought up how East Hampton and Holyoke is lower. Um, and, and, you know, there's just nothing there for what you're paying for um, in Northampton. Uh, people want to say it's a great community to go to, but if there's no jobs there, why are people going to Northampton? Um, now, as far as um, the rental agency side of it, so I am, um, and you could probably ask most of the tenants I've placed. So I've worked with people from out west. I've worked with people from overseas who are looking for a place here. Now, can you imagine trying to email or call five, six, seven landlords instead of just calling one person such as myself? And I provide really good service to the people I work with. Um, many of which, you know, I've placed in East Hampton, Northampton, Amherst, um, even Waitley and South Deerfield. So I try to treat everybody that I deal with, whether it's landlord or tenant with, with the way I would want to be treated. And I look at the best options for these people. Um, and I work 
with everybody. I have to, as a real estate agent, I have to abide by laws that I can't discriminate against somebody due to race or wealth or um, any type of um, background that they have. So, um, so I try to provide that. It's, I've heard horror stories about rental agencies or about other agents. Um, and I just want to uh, quickly clarify something. So a lot of people get the assumption that real estate agents are management companies and we are not. We provide a service, I think, mostly to the tenant, not so much to the landlord. We basically list something for the landlord and the tenants come to us because somebody like me, I know the area very well, um, haven't been here for 40 plus years. Um, so I can give them more insight than maybe a landlord um, could. I could give them insights on places to, to eat, places to for recreational areas. Um, if they're coming here, they want to know the distance from Northampton to UMass, um, stuff like that. Um, a lot of this stuff you can find on Google, but it doesn't, not everybody puts a lot of stock in some of the reviews that they see on things like Google and Bing and uh, stuff like that. So um, I, I think um, switching the fees to landlords will make it more difficult for purchasing, but I think Northampton needs to really uh, sit down with, with a whole group and just look at a lot of um, sustainable and have a better vision for housing going forward before they start going after a small business. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Hannah, you are next. Yeah, thanks so much. Um, I just wanted to uh, say one more thing in response to uh, David Murphy and Joe Mysterka, um, both who cited the study. So um, like I said before, I'm a member of the Northampton, North, Northampton Housing Partnership. Um, the study that we've been talking about um, was paid for by the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission um, and done in partnership with the Housing Partnership. Um, one thing that David Murphy had said was that because the data from the study is coming from the Springfield metropolitan area, that the data was gobbledygook. Um, Northampton is part of the Springfield metropolitan area. So I just wanted to make sure that like that was really clear. And actually something that we're working on right now in the housing partnership and that Amherst is trying to do also is eventually separate Northampton um, as its own small market area rent uh, because the rents are so high in Northampton that by us being part of the Springfield metropolitan area, the data in that study is actually lower than it should be. So when you see like some of those numbers of how much um, the average rental is in Northampton, those numbers are getting driven down by the fact that, um, you know, the whole Springfield metropolitan area is being included, but it doesn't make that data gobbledygook. And also, you know, I feel like sometimes in arguments to separate Northampton from the greater Springfield metropolitan area, it can be a little bit of a dog whistle for trying to separate Northampton as a community from uh, places like Chicopee, Holyoke, Springfield. And so I just also want to be aware of um, that line that's being drawn when we talk about like, you know, well, maybe we shouldn't be giving people additional help to get to Northampton. Um, so I just, I just wanted to make that distinction because we are part of that metropolitan area. Um, so that's all. Thanks. Thank you. I'll say one last hand. That's David. Oh, that's it. There we go. There we go. Thank you. Thank you, Hannah, for making my case for me. Because um, you guys want to separate too. Because putting Northampton and Amherst in with the Springfield metropolitan statistical area doesn't work. And you're right. Our rents, yeah, they're going to go up. But our underserved populations, okay? The very people that you're trying to help here, those numbers are gonna go down because there's more underserved people in Hamden County than there are in Hampshire County. So yeah, the basic rent's gonna go up, but the number of underserved people, the whole reason you're doing this is gonna go down, which is why it's gobbledygook. So thank you, Hannah, for bringing that to people's attention.
All right, seeing as there are no other hands, I think that is time that we can call this public forum. I do want to thank everyone for coming out to speak. I think it is very important uh, that we have places for these conversations. Um, I know that other counselors here are also very passionate about this issue. So thank you guys for your time for this. Um, counselors, how are you feeling after that? Do you want to, Counselor Jarrett? Uh, could we have a short recess? Yes, we can. How, how's five minutes down? Sounds good yeah. to me. That's great. Right. Thank you. All right, perfect. Thank you, guys. We're going to take a quick break.
I'm here, Councillor Perry, but I'm going to keep my camera off for the, the last possible moment so I can eat this eat meatloaf. Okay. Okay. Oh. Ah. Okay. It's dark in here. I know. Hold on. Give a second. Um, here. Oh, I should know you're ever present, Pam. You're always working. You're always. <laughs> All right, we'll wait for Rachel and then. Me? There's some light. There you go. All right, I think everyone is back. Marissa, uh, sorry, Councilor Elkins is here, but just in the dark. Not eating meat, though. Not, <laughs> definitely not. Oh, sorry. Not. Oh. Certainly not sharing it. I know, it's that time. All right, well, everyone's back. Uh, so that was what was item four on the agenda, which I moved forward to allow people to have some time and space. So now we are on to item three, which is pretty much why we're here, is, is the order that has been referred to the committee. Would you guys prefer us reading this order or would I can turn it over to either Council Mayori or Council Jarrett since you guys are uh, have had a hand in writing this? Council Jarrett, would you like to? Sure. Um, uh, I'll ask the, you know, the committee, would, would you, would you like us to, to read it? Uh, would that be helpful to folks or, um, I could just give a summary of it. Okay. Um, uh, <clears throat> great. So as, uh, so let's see, this goes back to when the, um, I served on the housing partnership. And um, but back then, the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission uh, was creating the report. Um, so we helped with, with that report, uh, as was said. And um, the, 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 there, was, there were many, many barriers assessed. And um, this is certainly one of them. Um, you know, we've, we've looked at the, the cost of housing, of course, is a major concern, but the upfront cost, um, as many people spoke about, first class security and 60% was mentioned, but some uh, are charging as much as 75% uh, of one month's rent. And uh, so this will, um, this, as was mentioned also, is, is a home rule petition because we don't have the ability ourselves to enact this. This is something that we need to get the permission of the legislature to do. Um, and then also the um, the special committee for review of ordinances uh, considered this as well and uh, asked uh, us to to move forward uh, on that on this. Um, and there are some uh, we actually have a, an amendment to consider as well um, to clarify <laughs> that the you know this this wouldn't require the, the purpose of this legislation is to um, <clears throat> not to have the, the the tenant not be required to pay the a fee to a broker um, <clears throat> the purpose is not to prevent a broker from working with a tenant, and there was some concern about that, um, and so we are will be introducing shortly an amendment to make that clear that you know they definitely can work with with the tenant, um, and also the purpose is not to uh, exclude a tenant on their own from hiring a 
uh, a broker to help them find places. It just would not require them to pay um, <clears throat> if they did not do that on their own. And that's actually something I'm not, I'm not sure, we may need to update language further to, to consider that as well. Um, <clears throat> it's just, if they're working on behalf of the landlord, then um, they would not be able to pay, then they would not require the tenant to pay if, the, if, if so, the, but that, 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 so that's, that's another question I think that's been brought up tonight. Um, <clears throat> so that's the, uh, Councillor Maori, do you wanna add anything in terms of um, the, they just sort of introducing the general idea? Uh, let's see where there's so much I could add. Um, I want to have the discussion. I'll just say, you know, there's there are several communities working on um, submitting home rule petitions. Uh, I know Boston has also been um, looking at that and there's an, an enabling um, legislation was already mentioned. And um, yeah, this is just, you know, as as um, Councilor Jarrett said, this is to, um, you know, open up the initial barrier to housing. Um, and so um, we think it makes sound sense. And I also, I think the other points that, that um, I was, I really would love to, to thank all of, all, all, anyone who talked tonight because um, I found everyone's stories really compelling. Everyone brought something new and had a really valid perspective. Um, so, you know, the, the the, the folks in Boston who are looking at this, they're, they're looking at it based on a study they did, which showed um, um, discrimination against um, those with housing vouchers and uh, discrimination um, against, you know, um, right, racial discrimination, discrimination against immigrants. And I'm not saying that's what's happening here. And I'm I completely, I'm, I'm thankful to hear of the ways that, um, that our local uh, realtors and and brokers are, are helping. Um, I heard I heard compelling stories about how they're helping with um, with fair housing. They're they're educating landlords, and I deeply deeply appreciate that. But I just want to just point out that you know that kind of arbitration can go both ways. And so the, the point of this legislation is to kind of you know to, to pre pre prevent those equities and not just kind of um, just hope for the great people like we we've, we've met tonight. I'll stop there and then there's some other things I'd like to add, but I'd really like to have more of a discussion to see what what um, what we haven't covered already. Yeah, so I, I think we could, is it acceptable to open this up for discussion? Um, I, I'll, I'll move a positive recommendation. Oh, okay. Back here. And I'll second that, oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Counselor. All right. And then we now will discuss. <clears throat> for the purposes of discussion, right. Yes. Um, I, oh, if I can start, I, I was struck by a number of the, um, you know, I'm, I'm certainly, you know, I find the concerns of, of, I heard him referred to a few times, the mom and pop uh, landlords who use this. I, I have to say one thing, I am very persuaded that this was uh, a, um, a service um, for landlords. The landlords get a great deal out of that. I was most struck by the description of all the work that um, it was difficult for some of the landlords to do that these uh, services uh, that the brokers do for them. Um, and, but I, 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 there's nothing about this legislation that I read to say that, that uh, bro the brokers can't you know can't exist or are going to become in and of themselves illegal i guess the question i have and i wonder if any if any of the other counselors and the sponsors <coughs> okay as you've put this forward i what i didn't hear was any argument or suggestion that the brokerages the, the brokers would go out of business that they were actually felt like that they would lose such a margin of their business that they would uh that that landlords essentially wouldn't hire them. Are you hearing that from the business people that you talk to and, and other people in this, uh, as you've been talking about this legislation? Councilor Jared. Yeah, I can respond. Um, no, I, I, I'm, I've, I have heard that the most 
I, I think that there would be some property owners who would choose not to pay and would do it themselves. But in general, um, the, the service is valuable. And I, I have heard that the, the most would continue to use it. Um, <clears throat> so that that's not in, and you know, in, in most of the country, the, the property owner pays this fee. This is, you know, New York, Boston here, there's a few markets where the, the tenant is charged, um, but including very, very hot markets and other places. Um, so that's, I, I, know, I think that this is, you know, this is a, a model that uh, can work very well for brokers with the landlord paying. And, and I would argue that, you know, the, the landlords currently have no, there's no incentive to reduce those fees in the current system. Um, and if the property owners, the landlords are paying, the brokers will need to compete to provide a better service at a lower fee or, you know, a higher fee, but a, a better service. Um, so that the, I, I think we'll, we'll th that, that will, in terms of the free free market system, um, having that the person who pays could help with with that, then maybe bring down some of those fees. Uh, Council Mary. Um, I just was looking at my notes. I just also wanted to mention that um, um, I am not anti-business. I don't feel like Councillor Jared or any or the mayor you know, are looking at this as an anti-business. In fact, I think what we're trying to do is to allow folks to, to, to be able to stay in our city. And, um, and that would certainly be good for the economy. I guess I want to say that I don't see this as not being good for our local economy. I think having folks being able to stay here is, is good for everyone. I'm gonna call on myself. Uh, so <laughs> Councilor Jarrett, you had mentioned wanting to maybe change some language to allow for uh, potential renters and potential tenants to hire a, a broker. Um, so are you, are you saying that people would be able to, to opt to pay a fee or what, what were you thinking that would look like? It's it's an interesting question. It was never. It was. I don't believe it was ever our intention to, if a tenant willingly wants to hire a broker, um, we don't want to prohibit that. That is never. That was never our intention, um, in my understanding. And I don't know if you know the co my co sponsors agree with that. Um, and I think this is that is something that I will want to check this language you know with our city solicitor and and see if uh that is prohibited it, it's a little unclear to me um <clears throat> because it talks about on behalf of a landlord so if you're if you're doing something on behalf if on behalf of a landlord it would be prohibited um so but it's it's a little unclear to me when that would be so that would be something i would like to clarify and um you know we're going to bring this to legislative matters next so that could be something that I could look into between now and the next committee. Okay, uh, Councillor Elkins. And and so, uh, Councillor Jarrett, um, along with that, what would be helpful is is if if we, if I would like to understand. Um, so, a I I totally understand. It's been my experience living in other cities that this that that tenants paying for these fees is not is certainly not universal. Um, I'd be curious to know though, I'm assuming in every other market uh, where landlords pay fees though, that there must be some model, I guess is what I'm saying is, could you, could, it would be helpful if we could understand or if you had any uh, examples of how um, tenants who wanted to use a brokerage, how they, how they work in other cities, if there are other examples of that. Sorry, that was a lot of words to say. If you could bring an example, please, that would be, <laughs> that'd be great. I'll do some research on my own too, but. Yeah. Absolutely, yes, I'll, I'll do that research to see if, if, if there are examples in, in other cities, you know, besides Boston, New York and here where a tenant specifically hires a broker to help them. Um, 
So I'll do that research. Councilor Mary, I saw you. Yeah, I was just going to say, I, think, I believe that New York has those examples. You know, New York has um, did, did change the system recently. I was just trying to think of one in our area. I'm um, not that it has to be. I, I just want to say, I, I would be intrigued to see what the models look like because, you know, the, obviously this is something that just came to me through this discussion. And again, I also want to thank everyone for their, their stories. You guys really have, have given me a lot to, to think about and digest. But I, I would worry that it's already hard for lower income people to move into the city. And I imagine, you know, we have had an influx of folks from, from New York and other places who do have a lot more income to spend, whether it's just buying houses or to rent. So I, I wouldn't want a situation where, you know, someone with a lot of money is like, I'll just spend the, the broker's fee and get the best, you know, best options I can. Um, is there anything to protect against that? Or is there a way we can kind of bake that in? I, I'm just spitballing here. So maybe that's something to think about before coming to legislative. Yeah. Council Mayor. Yeah. I was just going to say, I think the, I, I had the same um, kind of concern, uh, Council Perry, and I think it's about the wording and what services, um, you know, what services you're you're allowing folks to what you're requiring, what you're not requiring, because uh, real, uh, realtors and brokers have various services. So I think we have to look at it carefully because I hear your concern. I had the same one. You don't want to make it a two-tiered system where effectively, uh, yeah, I get it. Right. And it's successfully done, but we need to look carefully at the language, to make sure. Yeah. Does anyone else have any, any discussions for this or? Council Chair. Yeah, I, can, I wanted to make a few more points. Okay. Um, with regard to the unlocking opportunity report, um, I, you know, the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission um, produced this report and I am I'm confident in their abilities to separate out statistics for Northampton when they're taking data from the Springfield Metropolitan Statistical Area. Um, I think they're, you know, very competent and they do planning uh, throughout the valley. Um, so uh, that wanted to mention that. And, and just to say that, you know, I think in listening to folks, and I'm, I'm very glad that, that everyone came out um, and we got such a turnout, it was very good. Um, but I don't, no one has proposed a solution to the barrier to entry problem other than switching the cost to the landlord. And so that's, um, you know, this still seems like a, a path, path forward to that. Um, and then the point I wanted to make about um, that, you know, rents can only be raised as much as the market will bear. We've seen property values and, and rental rates have increased much faster than wages and inflation in the last couple of decades. So that's made them an excellent investment, um, but has caused increased difficulty for low and moderate income renters. So just, just to make the point of equity that um, anyone who's gotten, who got into the market um, more than you know, in the last couple of years has in, in their equity in, in their properties uh, has increased tremendously um, as have the rents, rents as well. Um, so you know, we, we don't wanna create an excessive burden on property owners and especially mom and pop property owners, but we also need to realize uh, how, much, uh, land, uh, how much property owners have benefited from this market. Um, and so when weighing that, and you know, trying to look, trying to to find a balance here, um, this seems like an appropriate step to take, and one that can be absorbed. Um, and even if it's is passed on, it's spread out uh, over uh, the the period um, as much as you know we as uh, very likely. Um, so, and then I wanted to speak about. You know, we've, this isn't the only action that we've taken um, or will take, I hope. We've done, and since this report was released, we've done a number of zoning changes 
um, to allow more multifamily units throughout the city uh, to create, to allow smaller, more smaller units. Um, and we just passed zoning to encourage more residential units in downtown Northampton and Florence Center. So this is, this, this is a very uh, pro-business activity to expand the market, to encourage um, this, this development, this expansion of, um, of, of opportunities uh, and hopefully increased housing as well. Um, and I know the Youth Commission and the Planning Department and some other counselors are, are working on additional zoning pro proposals to encourage more multi-unit residential. Um, so I just, just wanted to, to state that we're trying to find balances and that, that and, and I think this is an appropriate step to try to reduce the barrier to entry. And we've also got to increase the market um, and we're working on that as well. Councilor Elkins. Yeah, I just want to um, add on to what Councilor Jarrett just said, which is to say, the other thing about, and we and we are, we I'm I'm so proud of the of the zoning um, changes that we we just instituted and have been over the last um, few years, but development those changes are it takes time to add to the, the housing supply based on these kinds of zoning changes, and so so. It's not. It's certainly not the case that um, it's. It's not the case that uh, we are going to be able to flood the market with housing, you know, overnight, and therefore bring you know prices down. What will happen, and with this kind of measure, and why I support it, um, with this kind of measure, is that it's it's the little things that we can do to stabilize the rental market um, to keep and. There are other things that we can do in, in terms of the, the property market, the housing market in general, but also specifically rental to keep it from skyrocketing the way. Or, and, and maybe we can't. Maybe maybe the market forces are such that it's going to be difficult or impossible to prevent that from happening. But I don't see this as something that over the long term is going to dramatically raise market prices. It is it is a it is a it's a circuit, it's one of the few things, one of the things that we can do to act as a circuit breaker until the zoning changes that we are doing, which are gonna take a long time to implement because you have to have, as, as uh, David Murphy said, you have to, we have to have investors, we have to have people come in, they have to do the things, they have to build the things that the zoning now allows and that just takes time. Um, so I very much support the things that, everything that we can do in the short term to prevent barriers from the city, every every person who just leaves as the as the as the uh, person I'm sorry I didn't get everybody's name, but the person who's gone off to Frank going off to Franklin County, and every person who chooses to not move here in the first place, or who has lived here and and feels like they can't come back, I, this this is where the rubber meets the road in terms of the community that we want to have and and who we are here, um, and I have to say the suggestion that some people just don't deserve to live here is pretty offensive. Um, that we just ought to accept that Northampton is expensive and it's, uh, it's, it's, and so therefore we shouldn't try to make it the, the kind of place where, where people who want to be here um, can be here. Um, uh, that's, that is pretty, uh, that was a lot <laughs> um, to suggest. So um, I support this legislation. I'll, I'm gonna happily vote to recommend it. Um, Council Mary. Yeah, that just reminded me of something I was thinking too about talking about it. You know, this is we're targeting the, the lowest, you know, the the underserved or the lowest common whatever. You know, that was an, another comment that kind of got to me because, well, first of all, um, I'm happy to do so, but also what we know about Northampton is we're missing all sorts of housing, attainable housing. Robert. Uh, was saying he makes too much to get help. He still can't afford the, the um, you know, the, the broker's fee. So it doesn't take much. I mean, when you say underserved, I mean, that's a, that's, these days, that's, that's a really big uh, chunk of people. That's not just, we're not just talking about um, um, those in, in, the, in the lowest rung in terms of poverty or low income. So um, just to keep that in mind. Oh, it looks like the oh, mayor has oh. their hand up. Hi. Hi. Thanks. Hi. And thanks everyone for this discussion. Um, I just want to do 
to sort of echo the point that I think both Councillor Elkins and Mayori just made and that this is, it's precisely the point that this is meant to help um, remove a barrier for those for which um, they're, they're having the hardest time finding housing. And we know that this, this one extra component, this one extra fee is often very much um, the thing that keeps someone from gaining housing. So um, it, it is absolutely the goal is to try and remove that barrier and um, do whatever we can to, uh, to enable people who um, are on the edge of not being able to find housing. And, and I fully agree that I, I want everyone who wants to live in Northampton to be able to live in Northampton. And it, it was utterly heartbreaking for me to hear um, people leaving our community because they can't afford to live here. Um, and I appreciate all that, that we are doing to try and create more housing at every single level and uh, provide more opportunity. But um, I think that this is a really important piece of that. And, um, and I'm just really grateful to my co-sponsors um, for all the work that you've done on this and, and how long that we've been working on it and for the housing partnership for um, all that you've given to this. So um, thank you for letting me listen in and, and be a part of this. And, and, um, and I just wanted to sort of say that from my heart. So thank you. Thank you for your hard work as well, Mayor. It's been a long journey for this. I know you're working on it when you're a counselor. Um, before we go towards you know voting on this, I also wanna say that uh, I'm very proud at how proactive Northampton is trying to be to tackle this issue. Um, as stated, this is, uh, a, a major issue facing our city, and it's not gonna be solved by one thing. Um, and we have to use all of the tools in our, our toolbox in order to achieve what we want, which is a, a, you know, a more diverse Northampton. You know, we want diverse businesses, we want diverse people here. And personally, as someone who has spent my entire life in Northampton as a renter, um, you know, this issue really hits home for me. Um, luckily, I have the, the benefit of having one of those really great landlords who's treated me extremely well. You know, I've been in this space for over 15 years, you know, more than that, um, with minimal increases and, and whatnot. And, um, you know, I, I wouldn't even know what to do if I had to, to come up with, you know, first, last security and a renter's fee. Uh, even now that I feel like I'm kind of established in my life, but I know that I would not have been able to do that when I first moved to this area as a server. Um, and I have spent a lot of my time in the service industry in the city, whether it's entertainment or whether it's bars, restaurants. And for me, looking at my fellow servers and knowing that very few of them can afford to live in Northampton uh, is a problem. You know, having to have the people serving your food live outside of the place it is, it just seems wrong for me. Um, and I think this could go a long way to helping alleviate some of that stress and burden. Um, the one thing I will say, uh, Council Jared, is you said no one really came up with any other solutions. And I, I did note that Peter Whalen, who I think was the first person who said something, uh, did put out the question of whether or not these fees could be split between tenants and landlords. I'm not saying that's an answer, but that might be something to look into as well. Um, because what I have heard is that some of the uses of the, the brokers are for the tenants and some is for the landlords. Um, I'm not certain, while, while I'm certain personally that I think that uh, landlords could probably take the hit more than tenants, um, I don't know if that's set in stone. So, because there, there are a lot of mom and pop established apparently. Council Mayor. Were you done though, Council Mayor? Yes, that's it. You got, you inspired me. No, I was just thinking, well, I mean, Let's own that the home rule petition process is uncertain and lengthy. And I, I would just put it out there that there's plenty of time to experiment with this. And um, it, it'd be, you know, people brought up some really innovative ideas. I was totally inspired by a lot of what was said. And we've got, we've, we've got time to, to try, you know, it's not either or, we could try those things uh, you know, as we go through the process. Councillor Elkins. Oh, and then Council Jared. Uh, one last. Do, I mean, do have we? Um, do we know where um, Senator Comerford, Comerford, and uh, uh, Representative Sabadosa? How how are their staffs? How, how are they positioned on this? Do you do we know? Yeah, they are both very supportive 
um, and are, are very willing to move it and excited to move it forward for us. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, I, with that, I think, oh, Councilor Jared. Yeah, there was um, one more point um, regarding uh, those with housing vouchers, like Section 8 vouchers, and also people on disability. Um, those, the brokers, th those uh, will not pay a broker's fee, in my understanding. Um, and people on disability uh, are often prohibited from saving up money to pay for something like this. Like they're actually not allowed to have it in their bank account, because then that would be them having too much money to then qualify for being on disability. So um, it, it creates, in addition, you know, those folks often do face discrimination. There was a study in the Boston area uh, that, that, that really showed, showed that. I don't know uh, out here, um, but in, in the Boston area for sure. And, and this is an economic form uh, that simply pu pushes them out uh, completely from, from using any bro broker that charges a fee. Um, so this would remove uh, one barrier that, that those folks are, are facing. Um, and before we vote, I, I think the procedure would be um, that there's this amendment oh, that yes. we are proposing. So uh, if I could, uh, I, I would move um, that we uh, adopt the amendment um, to our recommended language. And um, I can just um, mention it, that there's basically a, in the third whereas there is a um, an extra the just a Scrivener's error, um, and then down below in section two of the Act, um, it it will it would read, no landowner, landlord, lessor, or sub lessor shall demand or require that a tenant or prospective tenant, and then adding retain, hire, or engage, a rental agent or broker, and adding and pay such agent or broker a fee or commission as a condition to applying for or leasing a residential rental unit in the city of Northampton. Um, so that, that just clarifies that they can indeed work with tenants. Um, they, the tenants just do not have to pay. Okay. So I guess I would need a second on that amendment. I'd second that. All right. And then I believe we would take a vote PM. Councilor Perry? Yes. Councilor Elkins? Yes. Councilor Mayori? Yes. Councilor Jerry? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. And now we, and then that moves to the positive motion that you put on the floor, Councilor Jerry? Right. Okay. So, and then we could take a vote on that as well. I thought we voted subject to that amendment. Oh, is that how it works? Or did you vote for the amendment first and then? I thought. Oh, yeah. I I thought it was that we just voted to move the amendment into our yes. positive recommendation, but now we would uh, need to vote on the now amended uh, order. <laughs> yeah. It's a short list. We can do it again. No, it's okay. So now, now we are voting on the positive recommendation. <laughs> uh, Councillor Perry. I am a yes. Councillor Elkins. Yes. Councillor Mayari. Yes. Councillor Garrett. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Pam. Pam, uh, I love your earring. <laughs> um, which then brings us to that is the that's everything for us here. I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Uh, before we do that, okay. if I could just let people know the process um, that next this will go to the legislative matters meeting, uh, which is on Monday, May 9th. Uh, at 5.30 p.m. Um, and then, so that committee will then take up a recommendation, you know, as, as this is amended. And then um, if, if we finish that recommendation um, and deci decide to make one at that meeting, then it would be um, at our Thursday, May 19th council meeting. Okay. Thank you. With that. that, I'd move to adjourn. Second. There are roll call. Okay, Councillor Perry. Yes. Councillor Elkins. Yes. Councillor Mayori. Yes. And Councillor Jarrett. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. I just want to say thank you again.